Okay, uh, hello and welcome to um, a new tutorial on Moore's regressions in SPSS. Uh, as always, pause it and copy out the um, values that you have in front of you if you want to be doing this while I'm talking. Um, here what we're trying to do is we're trying to predict uh, level of extraversion in individuals, bearing in mind that each row of the here is going to be one participant, based upon two independent variables. The two independent variables, independent variables are mood and the number of alcoholic drinks they've consumed. So basically this is saying do you get more talkative depending on how happy you are and also how much uh, booze you've had. Nice and straightforward. Okay, so what do we do to work this out? Well, you've got one DV and two IVs. Uh, so what that means is you can't do a single regression, you need to do a, a multiple regression. So to do that we go to Analyze Regression and Linear. We take the DV, which is extraversion, put it into dependence and we take mood put it into independent and alcoholic drinks and put it into independent. It's nice and simple. Next we need to do some statistics to get out of it. Um, and we, what we want is we want descriptives, we want parts and partial correlations and we want collinearity diagnostics. And then we press continue. And then we press OK. Alright, so as with the simple regression this gives us loads of information and it starts off very general and then it gets more precise and more specific as it goes through. So it starts off with descriptive statistics and gives you a nice lot of means, standard deviations and the number of people involved. Again this is always a good check because uh, if you start to suddenly realise you've got strange numbers then you can you can mark out there's something wrong with your data. These things do happen. Next you've got correlations. So this is useful to know uh, for a reason which I'll explain in a moment. The variables entered, uh, then you've got the model summary the R squared, remember the R squared is the amount of variance of the dependent variable that can be explained jointly by the independent variables within your model. So that's basically how good uh, it is at explaining your model. Larger R squared means that it's just explaining more variance. The maximum theoretically of course is going to be one which is explaining everything which would be a perfect model which never happens. Next you've got the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table tells you whether or not your model is statistically significant. So this basically says whether or not you're on the right track. To tell if it's significant or not, we look at the sig value here, which is less than our critical value of 0 0.05, and we can therefore te determine that the ANOVA is significant, and that means that our model itself is somehow predicting the data, the DV based on the IVs. And when you're going to write up your F values and so on, you write F2, 7 equals 29.723, P equals 0 0.00001, whatever that value ends up being. Okay. Next step, this is quite important here in multiple regression. So in simple regression, single regression, what you do is you try and predict one DV from one IV. But in multiple regression, it's a different story because you're trying to predict one DV based on multiple IVs. And what this means is that sometimes when you run these things, you'll find that only a certain number of your IVs are actually any good at predicting your DVs. So to be able to tell whether or not they're doing anything significant, you can look at the t-test that's run. So we go mood. Okay, T test, T value of 4.462. For this T test, you've got seven degrees of freedom, which you have to get from up here. And the P value for this T test is 0 0.003. So that tells us that it's significant, significant. So that means that mood significantly accounts for a large proportion of the variance in our DV. Next, alcoholic drinks consumed, T test of 3.078. The significance level is less than 0 0.05. So again, what this means is that the uh, number of alcoholic drinks consumed does reliably and significantly account for how uh, the DV is affected, okay, which is level of extraversion. All right, so um, here are your R's, um, and what else do we have? We have the um, slopes for the different uh, f uh, variables, the various factors involved. So that's the slope for mood, that's the slope for alcoholic drinks. So you can see that mood is having a, you know, is making it go steeper than alcoholic drinks. Um, and over here we have the collinearity diagnostics. Um, I said a moment ago uh, up here when we were looking at the correlations that I'd come back to these. I'm going to come back to them now. Um, basically you need to look at collinearity and the correlations because if you've got more than one IV and trying to predict a DV. If both the, oh, say here, if both the IVs were correlated with one another, then really you'd be wasting your time because you're basically trying to predict the same thing based on two identical things. 
um, so you'd be predicting a DV based on two highly correlated IVs so that would be pointless so what you then do is just chuck one of the IVs out because they're basically just saying the same thing okay so however because when we look down here at the collinearity statistics they're all within the tolerance levels that we have then we're not going to worry about it any more than that okay so that basically then overall what that's shown us is that we've got a significant model based on our ever table and both of these factors are significant within that model and then you just extract the various details and write them up and you're done there we go that's multiple regression in SPSS